Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're making this clockwork robot. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is I'm going to bring up my view a little bit and I'm going to delete the default cube and I'm going to go shift a mesh plane. So we're going to take this camera. We're going to recall this our projection cam. And then I've got a texture which I've downloaded from a website called free pick. So there's a link to that in the description below. So I'm just going to open up my shader editor, select my plane and click new to create a new material, drag and drop that uh, texture in. So I've just dragged and dropped it straight in and Blender automatically makes a node for this particular shader. I'm going to plug it in to the color. Now I'm going to switch over to material preview mode and there it is. Now I'm going to split my view and this view I'm going to go to the UV editor and I'll go into edit mode and you can see here this is what the image looks like. This photograph was taken you know at a bit of an angle so you can see this thing's on a table and the camera's not directly overhead right so if we were to use this you know we'd want to model stuff but everything would be kind of skewed to an angle so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a projection camera using our little projection cam that we've done at a similar angle and get it to match so that we can start to project this texture onto things and it'll be flat. But first thing we'll do is create a few more subdivisions on this so that as we rotate it, um, the UVs will actually lay out properly. So that's kind of an important thing. You'll notice that if you don't do that, it'll start to warp and do some weird stuff. So I'm just gonna type in subdivide. We're still in edit mode. And I'm gonna bring up the little drop down that appears here. I'm gonna roll the number of cuts just to increase the mesh a little bit. So we'll just do eight. And um, now what I can do is I'm going to split my view one more time. I'll just zoom this one out, just so you can still see it as a reference. Or actually, even better, I'll just split the view down here and I'll make this the UV editor. And this one, I'm gonna make a 3D viewport, okay? Now, I'm gonna hit zero on my number keypad to jump into the camera. You could also click this icon, it does the same thing. And the first step is we need to have the dimensions, okay, of our camera, the viewport of our camera, need to match the image, the file texture here. So what you do is open up the image or right click on the image. You can right click the image like in Windows, for example, and go details and you can get the pixel dimensions of that texture. So what you can do is enter in the pixel dimensions, the X and Y pixel dimensions into um, the resolution of your project. Okay, so the little printer icon and you enter it in the X and Y here. So now my viewport, you can see my camera, the view of my camera now matches uh, the basic size and shape of the image itself. Now, this is important because of the way we're doing this projection mapping, it needs to match. Now we can turn this back into 1920 1080 later if we're done with the projection mapping, but for now we need it to, to match. All right, so I'm gonna open up the side view, go to view and lock camera to view. And I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start to position my camera just kind of up and over this little plane right here. And on this view, I'm going to click the Z so that I'm looking in an orthographic perspective straight down. That'll really help me see when I get this right. Now in edit mode still with all the faces selected like this, I'm going to hit U to bring up the uh, UV menu and I'm going to go project from view. Now you can see that the, the way the mesh looks here is what's duplicated here in the UV editor. So the UVs are transformed to match the perspective of this view. And if I'm looking over in this view, you can see now this actually looks a bit more circular. It doesn't look like it's on that angle anymore. It's because I had the camera at a slight angle. So you can see if I move my camera around like to here and I do the same thing, you project from view, it's gonna start stretching over here, right? So you wanna get this plane to look right right, for the perspective of this image so that it looks correct over here. That's kind of the target. That's what we're trying to hit. So I'm just gonna keep moving my camera until I get something that looks looks right. It's cutting off, so I'm just gonna zoom. I think I have to zoom in with the camera. So I'm just clicking on the magnifying glass and dragging that's pushing my camera because we've got our viewport locked here, locked to the camera. Those controls help me move the camera. So I'm gonna hit you, project from view. Yeah, there we go. So you can see we get a little bit more project it out. And um, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this looks looks very circular. Now that I've got this, I don't want to move this camera. I want to keep this camera in this exact position, okay? So I'm just going to lock the camera. I'm going to go down to the uh, Object Properties tab, and I'm just going to click on all these little locks, these padlocks. That will just lock the camera. Now I can't transform it anymore. It's sort of stuck in this position. I'm also going to hide it because I don't want to see it. I want it to get in my way. Um, now, what I can do now is I can create any kind of mesh in this scene and kind of sculpt out little bits based on these shapes. And then I can 
use this camera and project from this view and it's going to project the UV so that they line up correctly and the texture works. So I can basically sculpt any piece I want and use any part of this I want and then project it onto it. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Plane, and um, I'll just grab this up just a little bit with G and Z, just so it's not intersecting. And then I'm going to B to box select, hold down Shift and just select one vertex. So I now have three selected. I'm going to hit X and delete, delete that vertex. Now I can look in the top down view by clicking the Z or pressing seven on my um, number keypad. And then I can grab this guy because I'm in an orthographic view and I'm looking straight down by hitting G, it's not moving it up and down. It's just moving it on the X and Y, right? So that's a little trick, just kind of speeds you up a bit. Um, and what I want to do is just identify some cool parts here and make them uh, or just outline them more or less. So I'm going to come over here and it's a little hard sometimes to find, where's that vertex? There it is. All right, let's make, let's make this thing. So I'm just going to put it here, uh, just line it up and I'll hit E to extrude and I'll just trace by hitting E, grab, gives me a new vertex and I will outline this thing. You don't have to put heaps of detail into this. You know, it doesn't have to be an exact trace, but you know, just go as far with it as you want really. Now I'm at the very end. I've traced out this whole thing, just this whole section. Now that I'm at the end, I need to connect these vertexes up. So what I'm going to do, middle mouse click to drag over to move this uh, top bar. I'm going to turn on snapping and switch to vertex snapping. Now if I grab this final vertex and I move my mouse close to another vertex, you see it snaps onto it. I'll click. Now these vertexes are in the exact same position, but I still have two vertexes. Things aren't connected. So the next step I need to do is hit A to select all my vertexes. Hit F3 to bring up the contact search menu, and I'm going to look for merge by distance. There it is. So I'm going to select merge by distance. You can see right down here at the bottom, it says removed one vertices. So that is uh, how I can join those. So now there's not two there. It's just one it's, and it's all connected up. Okay. So now I want to fill this. I'm going to fill this area with mesh. So I can go F3 and we're going to type grid fill. But in this case, grid fill does not, not look good. So I just need to increase my span number. And I might turn on simple bending. There we go. Now it's working. So I'm just going to increase this up until things look pretty good. I'm trying to get a half decent kind of clean look. Now you can smooth this stuff out if you've got really kind of messy geo and things are like butting up. If you hit, um, you hit select A to select all and then hold down shift and alt and then just click these outer edges. Um, it'll deselect everything on the outside. And then what you can do is you can type F3 and type in smooth and you want uh, let's see, mesh, not shading, where is it? Um, smooth vertices right here. Um, there we go. Vertex, smooth vertices. And now you can drag this and turn this up and that will smooth out that geo so that it, it gets a bit neater and a bit cleaner without changing the outline. Now I can't see the image underneath anymore. So it's helpful if you're gonna keep you know, doing more work, more modeling work is to come over to visibility under the um, properties tab for the object and scroll right down to viewport display and change from textured to wire. And that will make it just a wireframe object. So now you can actually see through behind it to the plane that we have still at the base of all this. Okay, so I've got my shape here and I'm gonna go punch a hole right here in this section right here. So I'm just gonna delete this vertex. It's kind of right in the middle a little bit. Um, and I might delete that one too. And then let's see, I'm gonna, Alt click to select this loop. And then I'm going to hit F3 and type in two sphere. And I would just drag my mouse across. And what that does is this is going to make those vertexes go into a circle shape. And it's a bit rough here on this side. I feel like I need one more loop cut. So I might just cut that there and there and then select it again and do the same thing. Two sphere, just drag that. Uh, that's pretty good. Maybe one more right here and try that. Sphere. That's pretty good. Scale that up. I'll just line it up here like that. And that's pretty good. Now what I can do is I can E to extrude, turn off snapping and grab set scale in just like that. Line it up with that screw and then E scale and I bring it up a little bit like so it's a rounded top and then F3 
and we're going to go for a root fill. All right, so I just got that issue, right? So all we need to do is let's just make one more cut. One right there, it looks like it would be good. And now I can go F3, root fill. And I'm going to increase my span. That I think it looks pretty good. Cool. Now for this section here, instead of trying to like get this mesh to have this shape, it's probably a bit easier if I just shift S, cursor to select it, shift A, cylinder, and then scale this down. And we can have multiple pieces of geo, like within one piece of geo in edit mode. I'll select those faces and X, delete, and then come down and select the one that's underneath. Select that one, delete, and now we just have one face. I can just line this up with this piece here. Might go to uh, vertex mode and E, rep Z, E, S to scale, scale it up. What I can do is hit L with my mouse hovering over it, and that will select leet. Um, so I can select that one object and just bring it up so it's above the other one. And then I might just alt click to select the outer edge of the main piece, and I'll hit E and Z. We can switch back to uh, wire from wire to texture. We can see it. There we go. And now what we can do is we can go into edit mode, hit A to select all, and over here in this view, we can hit, well, actually, before I do that, let me just show you what it looks like. If I put that material on it, so we come over to the material tab for this guy, click new, and then slap the material on, you can see it's like weird. It doesn't really work. It's like here and it's all smeared. But if I go into edit mode, select all, this is what the UV looks like. So it's like one of the cylinder pieces had some UV and nothing else did. So <laughs> that's the other thing that's there. Uh, but anyways, I can just come over here to my special projection cam view, hit you, project from view, and now it's going to project it um, so that you can see now it lines up perfectly with the image and that stuff is projected right on there just like I want. Now I could like move it away. You can see I've got a cool piece right there. So now a couple things we can do to these. Let's go ahead and take this one piece here. And I'll just minimize that. We don't really need to see that. And I can bring this over here because we're just using this to project. We can do a few things to this material. Um, we can come right here and let's turn on metallic. We'll just turn that up. And uh, I want to get a better sense of the light. So I'm just going to switch to rendered view, turn off scene world and the little drop down here and pick one of the built in HDRIs. Go for that one. And there we go. I'm going to come over to my modifiers tab. Just bring this up a bit. Add modifier. We're going to add a bevel modifier. I might switch it to percent. Um, that will sometimes give you a better result if you've got weird geo. It doesn't quite make sense to Blender. It'll like kind of brute force some bevel. So I'll just bevel it a little bit, set it to two segments and so maybe 8%. It'll just bevel those edges a little bit. Also right click and shade auto smooth. That will shade smooth if it's uh, the angle's not too steep between two faces. And then I'll come over here and add a subdivision surface after the bevel. And I'll set that to two. All right, so now what we'll do is come over here and create a bump. And we're going to create, actually, I'll just feed this color into the height and the normal into the normal. And I'll turn the distance down, so 0 0.001 maybe. That's the distance from the highest, so the brightest value to the darkest value in this image that I've just fed it in. I'm just telling Blender how high is it between those. Is it a mountain? Are they really high, mountain to valley? Or is it like just the surface of something and it's very, very minuscule, a few millimeters? So going to a really small distance is telling Blender it's just a few millimeters, not a lot between the height and the and the depth. Nice. We've got ourselves a material. Looks good. Doesn't have a bottom, but it's all right. We could actually just take this and um, go into edit mode. Actually, don't even need to go into edit mode. We can um, shift D, scale Z, negative one, grab Z, line it up like that. And then it's like these two guys and control J to join. Now it's one piece of mesh. You know, we're gonna create a second material. So I'm gonna select this, go into edit mode, go to face mode, hold down alt and shift and alt. So this will select these loops, right? Now I'm gonna to go to the material tab and I'm gonna click plus to put a new material slot on this object. Click new to create a new material on the object and then assign to assign it to those particular faces. Now, sometimes when you're using an image to project stuff to create cool materials, you get trapped into thinking that you've got to just use images, but you can't. You can mix procedural with images and doing both actually can work quite well. So we're going to create a little procedural shader for this bit. So I'm going to create some noise. Let's drop that there. I'm going to create a color ramp and I'm going to plug the factor into the factor and the color into the base color. 
And then I'm going to pick some colors that are sort of similar to what we've got. So a bit of like a copperish kind of brown that I'll leave that one at black. I'm going to turn off my viewport display stuff so I can really see how it looks. Turn the scale up a bit. And then I'm going to come over here and create a bump, plug the color into the height and normal into the normal. Again, I'm going to take the distance down because it's going to be too pronounced. So 0 0.001. Okay, so just now we did to match this up a little bit better. So it looks like there's a bit more of like a gold. So I'll just bring this over, put a little more green into it. So there you go. So we got a procedural material right next to a photograph. You can see they work really well together. Uh, let's go ahead and turn metallic on because that's something we did with this. We'll need to adjust the darkness of the color if I need to brighten it up a lot. All right, so let's head back over here and uh, pick out some other cool pieces. I can take this and we can select that loop by holding Alt and then I can come up to select and go to select, check or deselect. That will deselect every second uh, face. Now I can hit E and scale and it will scale them all out. Uh, and then we can go to individual origins and scale. Great, we've got a gear, we've got a thing, we've got another thing. All right, cool. So I've got some pieces. I've got a couple of small pieces. Just have three. I haven't done a whole lot. We can do a lot with these three pieces. So let's get to work. Let's start making something. So I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to, I'll just leave these here and I'm going to hide this thing. And I'll take these guys right here and I'll shift D and rotate X 90 degrees. Shift D, rotate X 90 degrees. Shift D, rotate X 90 degrees and focus in on it. And let's just start putting these together. Now what's cool about this is that you can basically um, come up with anything you want with just a few pieces. So Shift D, scale this down, rotate Y a little bit, and stick that there. Shift D, Y, rotate Y, bring that around. I can select everything to come up here and make sure I've got this set to median point. And then Shift D, scale Y, negative one. That will flip it all. I can bring this out. Uh, I've got the same thing on both sides. Looks kind of cool. But let's create a um, let's create some housing for this thing. So I'm going to chip day. I'm actually going to grab a surface. Go for a nerve surface because this creates a nice kind of shape that I want here. Bring this over it. I'm going to assign our procedural to it. Let's line that up, and then I'm going to go F3 uh, convert to mesh. Now it's a mesh object. I can hit A, E, and just bring that down again to give it some thickness. Right click auto smooth. Now shift D, scale Z negative one to flip it. Grab Z, bring it up, grab X. You can make a couple of these. Get shift D, rotate Y, grab Z a little bit. Shift D, rotate Y, grab Z a little bit. Shift D, rotate Y, grab Z a little bit. There we go. Let's create like a little eye for this thing. So I'm going to go shift A, mesh, cylinder, rotate Y 90, scale it down, grab X, bring it over here. And I want it to have like a shutter iris kind of thing. I'm actually going to edit mode and I'll hit, let's see, Alt. I'll go to three to get face mode, Alt, and I'm going to delete all those faces. So just have the front and the end. I'm going to come over here, delete the back, come right to here. And I'm going to go to edge mode. And let's see, I'm going to hit E and scale. Scale that in. I'm going to go back to face mode, get this extra face. We don't need that. So I'll delete that. Delete those faces. All right, back to this mode. Vertex, grab that and scale it right down to kind of where I want the iris uh, to end. And then I'm going to hit Control R to loop cut. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to create a series of loop cuts like that. And then I'll hold down Alt, select this center circle, and then I'm going to turn on proportional editing and rotate. And we're on the Y axis, uh, rotate X. There we go. I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel to shrink my selection. And you can see what it does is it makes this nice spiral effect. This mode, select that, that, that. It's probably big enough for one of the shutters, maybe one more. Yep, I'm gonna hit P, separate by selection. That makes this a new object. I can go into this object 
and actually don't want to lose it from this. So I should, cause you see right now, if I grab this, move it away, we've got a slice taken out. So I'm going to hit all, hit A to select all in edit mode, shift D to duplicate, and then P again, separate by selection. Now I've got another object, select this one and control J to join. So now they're back in and then A within edit mode of this, F3 merge by distance. And that'll put 14 vertices back together. So just refused all that. So now I have a copy right here that I can use, but I still have the whole circle. So all right, I'm going to edit mode for this. And I'm going to hit A to select all and E to extrude and X. I'm going to lock it on the X and just bring it out a little bit. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab this row of faces like that. Keep proportional editing turned on and then scale X and then roll my mouse wheel. And I'm just going to bring this right down. And I just want to taper. So you can see how it tapers out. Do the same here. Shift select these and then scale X. And just play with that mouse wheel to get the fall off right. That's pretty good. Right click, auto shade smooth. And then what we'll do is I will, I will take this and put a material on it. This will be my uh, shutter material. And then I want to duplicate, shift D to duplicate, rotate X 30 degrees, maybe a bit more, rotate X, 35, yeah. So I want a little bit of overlap like that. Shift D, rotate X, 5, whoops, rotate X, 35. Shift D, R, X, 35, D, R, X, 35. Turn the base color of this right down to like a black or a missing one, okay. Do that, Shift D, R, X. Now I'll take this thing, grab X, bring it back a bit, and then Actually, I like it intersecting. I'm going to edit mode for this, E, X, bring it back. Um, we could make this a bit like a camera, so I could scale this up. Shift X so it doesn't scale on the X, maybe. I'm gonna loop cut and just find where it lines up with the edge. And then face mode, Alt, click that, E and X, and bring that out. Now I'm gonna control J just to join them as one object. And then I'll shift select that and control P to parent objects of these guys. All I have to do is grab this now to move it around. Let's go over here to the render settings and turn on ambient occlusion and bloom and screen space reflections. Really help this start to come alive. Um, we can find this thing in our hierarchy with full stop and then right click select hierarchy and then shift D to duplicate and scale down. Maybe there's two cameras. All right, let's make some legs. I'm gonna go shift A, Q, grab X, scale Y, Scale X, just make this thing. I'm going to turn Bloom off. It's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> Grab Y and go into edit mode. Actually, what I'll do, I'll keep the pivot up here because this is where I want to rotate the leg from. Go to edit mode, hit A and grab Z. Down. That way it'll still pivot from that point. And I'll hit three to go into face mode and I to inset, bring this in, scale Z, bring that up, scale X, bring that in, scale Z. I do want to bring that down a bit, I think. E, uh, Y, bring it in, scale. Grab this, I to inset, and E, Y, bring that out, scale it down. Uh, let's go. Add inset here, E, bring it in, scale here as well. Let's just add inset again, grab X, Y, scale, scale Y, scale X, grab X, grab Y. I'm just guessing, <laughs> don't really know what I'm doing here. Add inset, bring that down. E, X, bring it in, scale. Well, let's go ahead and put, we want to put on this, let's put uh, the procedural onto it. Angle that leg a little bit, line it up. We're just going to grab some parts. Those out, wrap this up here. We scale Y and stretch it out a bit. Down, looks pretty good. And all this, we're just shifting to duplicate, scale Y negative one, 
grab Y, bring it over. So I'm going to go Shift A and camera. This will be the camera that I actually use, not my projection camera, but my main hero camera. So I'm going to click on the little green camera icon next to the camera name. It will make it the one that I look through when I hit zero on my network keypad. I can also go ahead and set everything back to um, go to the printer and set it back to 1920, 1080 or whatever my aspect ratio is. Just have to remember I need to set it back if I'm going to do any more projection mapping. So I'll lock my camera to view and just find a cool angle here. Let's go up to our little drop down and let's turn roll bar opacity up and maybe turn the blur down a bit and then rotate this some. We get a cool this, turn that blur up just a touch. I'm going to go to my camera tab, come down to viewport display and turn out passport too. I'm going to take my camera tab and I'm going to turn on depth of field. Bring my f-stop right down and then change my focus distance until I start to focus on an important bit like the eye here. And then I can hold down shift and drag the f-stop up just to gradually increase it so I still get sections. Now that I've got my camera angle kind of set up, uh, what I like to do here is to just find more bits that I can duplicate and move around. So I can add even more detail in just by uh, checking out where my camera is. And shift D to duplicate, make some cool stuff like this. Taking the leg, for example, scaling that down, grab a Y. Switch this to local, makes it a little bit easier. You move things around. See, so yeah, it really, really takes on a life of its own when um, when you start to get all this extra detail. Well, thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. Please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to get more content like this. And the special thanks to all the supporters over on Patreon and on, on YouTube here who join the channel. Thank you so much to all of you. If you'd like to join them, you can find the links in the description below. If you join Patreon, the month this video is published, you'll be able to download this project file if you join at the second tier and up. So if you want this project file, head over there. You can also get the full uncut version of this tutorial where I go way deeper, do a lot more extra detail and stuff. If you want to watch all that, this one runs for about an hour and a half. So if you're keen on that, you can join on YouTube at the All Access Pass level or higher or over on Patreon at any level to get access to that special uncut version of the tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, see you later. Bye.